Hey guys, today we're going to tear apart this EcoFlow Delta 3 1000 Air portable power station to see what's inside. The power station has been fully discharged. Typically they hide screws under the feet here, but I removed all four feet and I see there are no screws. However, we do have some plastic inserts here, so we'll try under those. We have three Phillips screws, we'll get those removed. And there are two more Phillips screws down here in the front. There are two more pry marks on the front lower side here. We've got one modular connector for the display communications here. And then we have three uh, blade style connectors here for the AC output. There's actually a small retainer clip in there and the best way I found to remove them is a small flat tip slid under the left side here. With that out of the way, there are two, four, six more Phillips screws to hold this front plate on. Here is our main inverter charging board. So this is our AC input. We have a fuse off the AC input. We have a relay that I'm guessing is the transfer between AC power and inverter power. We have several large inductors. These leads over here are the AC output. Uh, we have a transformer and our FET transistors, our capacitors. We have a cooling fan, 12 volt, 300 milliamps. Uh, the, top, the top left up here is handling the DC input. So this is our DC input connector for our DC charger or a solar panel. Our capacitors for that are a large uh, inductor for that charging circuit. These two terminals up here are the battery power. So this is the B minus terminal and the B plus terminal. I'm not sure what this large heatsink is. I don't see any transistors on it. Perhaps there's a, a processor or something underneath of there. Here we have a communications connector for the BMS and that's really the only connector left to remove. And we only have nine volts coming up those main battery terminals. So either that BMS is shut off or this is a fairly low voltage battery. First, we'll disconnect the communications lead. Then we'll disconnect the battery terminals here. Then I'm counting 10 Phillips screws around the perimeter of this inverter board and a couple in the center here to pull this board off. In order to remove this board, I also had to remove the fan. The screws for the fan are going through the board and into the metal support. Let's go ahead and pull the fan out. And now I should be able to lift off, there we go, the whole circuit board. So here's a closer look at it. Most of it is conformally coated. I don't think the entire thing is. And looking at the bottom, most of it is conformally coated on the bottom as well. Not too much to see here. It is interesting the number of conductors that come up from the battery for that communications cable. Uh, in conjunction with this large pile of paste under here, this uh, silicone, I do have to wonder if the BMS control functions are built into this board as well. Uh, because I also see a number of FETs here and there are some large resistors here that look like they could be shunt resistors as well. So I wonder if they built the BMS functionality into the top of this board. That would certainly be a new one for me if the BMS functionality were built into the inverter charging circuit board, but maybe that's how they cut down on cost manufacturing these. A couple of other things on the inverter board here. I did remove that large heat sink that was positioned right here. There are actually no components directly under it, but instead we have some pads there for thermal bridging because directly underneath of it, we have a series of FET transistors. So I'm not sure what those are actually used for. Uh, perhaps there's a separate set for the charger versus the actual BMS control because I do believe these are for the BMS control up here, but I'm not 100% certain. Maybe one of you guys out there can correct me if I'm wrong. I am certainly not an electrical engineer here. And one additional thing to note is I did trace the input AC here, which goes through this relay. This is not a transfer relay. This relay appears to be switching both the line and the neutral on the input. And the only other relay here is this blue one. So perhaps that's switching the output. I'm not exactly sure how the transfer is working between the inverter power and the AC power on this board either. Quick look at the back of the front panel. We have our display up here with a ribbon cable connecting to the main control board here. And you can see our USB-A and USB-C connectors there, service mount connectors. Connectors. This right here is our Bluetooth module. Uh, and then we have a series of header pins here, some voltage RXTX communications pins. So perhaps this is how they are programming this board. It makes me wonder if there's anything we can actually do with this board outside the power station. So it looks like there are two screws holding these plastic insulators in here. I think it's more than just that. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. So it turns out this was just held in by some adhesive here. So it is loose now. I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully wiggle it out. Oh my goodness, they are aluminum case prismatic cells and there's only three. There's only three of them. So that's three, six, nine point two four six, nine point six volts nominal. That's a small battery pack. That's kind of funny, but I love that they're aluminum case prismatic cells. I was not expecting a battery pack voltage that low. And look, there is no BMS on here. So the BMS functionality is built into that circuit board. 
We have our balance conductors coming down here. They are nicely routed through the center of the battery. They are held in place, no vents are obstructed at all. I do not see any temperature sensors, but there's enough conductors to have one. Okay, this one right here is a temperature sensor. All right, so there is a temperature sensor. It is affixed near the negative terminal here. Oh, this is actually one too. There are two temperature sensors. So we have one, two, three balance leads. There's no balance lead on the negative. So they're taking the balance lead from the negative terminal itself, I suppose. It is difficult to tell the composition of these bus bars. I do believe they are aluminum based on some scratch tests here. Uh, they are laser welded very nicely to the cells. The bus bars connecting these cells together do have expansion humps in there. The balance leads are soldered onto what appears to be some nickel strip, which is then either laser or spot welded to the bus bar itself. There are four screws holding this battery pack in place, two up here and there are two down here. So unfortunately it does look like this battery pack is glued into place here. If you look down in there, there's a green substance, some sort of potting or glue or I don't know what it is. We've got a steel plate on each end and there's a foam pad between the steel plate and the cell. We have the same thing over here, steel plate, foam pad, cell. It does look like there are some very thin pieces of foam between the cells. These cells are fixed in place with stainless steel bands. You can see one here and one up here as well. So I was able to eventually get the battery pack removed. It took about an hour and a lot of persuasion and a small hole in the back of the case, but it is out and you can see I've removed some of the bus bars already. From what I can tell, these are Goshen brand cells and the information I read online suggests they're good for 3000 cycles at an 80% depth of discharge. I'll admit this is a bit disappointing to see, especially considering we found EVE cells in the last EcoFlow we tore down. Goshen cells aren't bad, they're just cheap. And what we typically see with Goshen cells is a reduced cycle life count when compared to a, an EVE or similar uh, brand cell. All right, so that's about all there is to see in the Delta 3 1000 Air portable power station. It's pretty much one battery pack and one larger circuit board there. So perhaps for the next teardown and demonstration video, we'll have to get a, a larger power station of some kind. I'll have to see what I can find. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments you may have. Give this video a thumbs up before you go and thanks for watching.